Ranting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Buy all your office supplies and stationery online now. Righty ho, we're away again on The Huddle and Cameron Slater, the editor of Truth and whaleoil.co.nz. Hello, Cam. Hi, Larry. Good to talk to you. And we're going to have Josie Pagani back with us. Hello, Josie. Hi, Larry. Josie, yes, you wonder, you opposition claiming the Prime Minister was talking up war with uh, North Korea. He said, uh, should tensions escalate, then involvement would be a possibility. What do you see in this? Is this being. I don't know. Is it inflammatory? Do you think uh, the Prime Minister was declaring war on North Korea? What do you see? Well, look, Larry, I've worked for these international organisations where every country from Japan to to Denmark to Finland to New Zealand sit around a table and they're very careful about what they say because they know that whatever gets said, it'll be interpreted one way or the other to such an extent that the Japanese won't even talk off the cuff. They actually read what they're going to say in a, in a committee meeting at the OECD, for example. So what this tells me is that John Key's just being sloppy about this oh. at best. He's, being, he's, he's not being careful with what he says. I mean, if he was asked to speculate about... Would New Zealand go to war with Germany, for example? I mean, clearly we wouldn't say, well, of course, we've, we've had a great tradition of, of fighting the yeah, Germans, but so we'd be on that side. Uh, the, other, the other option, the, I'll just finish this, no, the only other on. option is that um, he's doing a bit of junior-grade sabre-rattling, which is very silly when America and Obama and, and the rest of the international community is trying to tone down the... Well, I think so, he, this is being overplayed uh, here, Cam. Uh, I don't think the Prime Minister said anything that wasn't obvious. He didn't declare war. He, did, he said he didn't want to speculate. He said it was the there was a possibility of words uh, that have been put largely into his mouth by the Weasley cowardly opposition parties and they all forget a very simple thing is the Korean War is still currently a United Nations police action under the Security Council Resolution 83 the war has not ended it never ended only a ceasefire was in place so it would be very interesting to see how all those internationalists and wowsers like Josie are going to cope <laughs> if, if the, the mad nutter in, in North Korea racks up and decides to start a shooting war again. Oh, absolutely. Because, but here's Tom, the no thing, way. Josie, but under the, Resolution yeah. 83 we would be there automatically under a UN mandate. But the point is, Cam, even when our allies, like the Americans and, and, and the Australians and the Europeans, are all desperately trying to tone no, down the rhetoric, not. because he's such a did, nutter in did North you Korea... Not notice the because B2 the, no, no, let me finish this, Cam. Oh, Don't interrupt. David let Shira. me finish. That, that, that if, that if they, they are absolutely... To, they've actually said on that oh, we need to tone down the Sarah rhetoric Bell. because that guy could be a nutter. And, if, and if the point is no. that accidents start war. Well, you really think he was upping the rhetoric, though. You think they know better so, than the Americans? So spending fifteen million dollars to fly two B-2 bombers on an exercise to drop some bombs on an island just off North Korea—that's toning it down. Come on, Josie, get with the real world. The guy's a nutter. The best thing we could do is to pop a grand slam through his front door, and that would solve a lot of problems. <laughs> All right, Cam Slater and Josie Pagani on the huddle. We're back in a moment. It's fourteen to six. Larry Williams Drive. With the new ANZ, the bank that gives you more. Back on the huddle with Cameron Slater and Joseph Bagani. Issue number two, Cam. The Danish politician who was uncomfortable with the Maori welcome has come in for some harsh criticism, warranted or not? Look, we, we have this tendency in New Zealand for people to think that we should all have this group think and people who have differing opinions have to be shouted down. This is just the rowdy left mostly again once again um, abusing someone because they felt uncomfortable now she probably didn't understand it but I thought the funniest thing of all though was um, was the Greens member for Mars Catherine Delahunty who was describing um, this politician uh, Marie Karup as a man I mean mm, well, it's I just totally it's, Josie, Josie look it, yeah. she, she, f she felt uncomfortable with this uh, wero or challenge and, and and she refers to the shouting and screaming. If she doesn't like, if she felt uncomfortable, she's entitled to say so. What's the big deal here? She can say what she wants, but there, there are consequences for it. And she didn't say she felt uncomfortable. She said it was grotesque, that the hucker was grotesque. Well, she felt uncomfortable then. So, I'm okay, saying she so, felt uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, but, um, but, but well, where I did agree with her, she said that if Danish people did the hucker, it would be insulting. Well, a bunch of half-naked, skinny white boys doing the hucker in Danish okay. would be, would like be a insulting. Science, a scientific poll conducted on whale oil today... <laughs> 
of 593 voters as we speak has said that 51% of them have said that it's used too often. That's a very scientific point. Okay. Look, look, I, I love the fact that Colin Craig has come in and said, oh, no, she should, she should be given the choice as to whether or not to have a haka or uh, have a cup of well, tea and a handshake. Colin who? Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. Colin who, that's uh, look, right. But, I mean, uh, if he's ashamed of being a New okay. Zealander, good luck. Just a quick one. Cameron, uh, Labor launching a billboard campaign targeting Nick Smith at first, but we'll focus on other... Ministers, the billboard says, uh, or asks, uh, did you elect this man to run our city? Why is the government undermining the council you elected? What do you see in this? Uh, who's funding well, this I sort of stuff? This, I, I think this is a shabby little attempt by the Labour Party to prop up Len Brown with a third-party campaign outside of, the, outside of the limits. But on top of that, they've got a shady um, you know, bunch of funders who, who haven't got the courage of their convictions to come forward, and they're hiding behind the skirts of the Labour Party as well. All right. If it's good enough for Labour to call out who the donors are of the National Party or, or whatever and have some honesty and transparency. Let's have the funders of these billboards come forward. What do you think, uh, Josie? Is it looking like a local body electoral campaign on behalf of Len Brown? No, look, what I'm seeing here is, is a consistent uh, campaign that Labour Party's run against National Party's changes in local government. In other words, if they're going to treat local government like a a branch department of central government, then you're actually going to take away the democratic processes in local government. So all, all, they're, all they're doing is consistently carrying through on that campaign. And, you know, it's fair enough to say that, that uh, uh, central government is trying to decide what's happening in Auckland. I mean, the, the campaign is really saying if, you want, if, if central government wants to have a say, then maybe they should stand as mayor. I mean, this is a consistent, I think, a consistent argument against changes to local government that take away the control of a mayor to do an, an elected mayor to do what the, the and what if it costs the taxpayer? What if it costs the taxpayer a billion bucks? Well, that, then that's the local, you know. then then they'll vote him out if they don't like it. But the point is, he's got a mandate. He's got support right. of people like Michael Barnett and and and, and um, the Employment okay. Manufacturers Association. You thank, know, it's a legitimate mandate. Thank you, Josie Pagani, and thank you, Cameron Slater, on the huddle. News Talk ZB. It's now eight to six.